So look at the relationship again. And I'm just showing you explicitly how we read the relationship. So an employee might be the manager of zero or many employees. An employee might be the subordinate of zero or one employee. OK, so we are just reading the relationship like we have done earlier. Another example, you've got a company that's got, let's say, several sales regions. OK, and they are divided hierarchically. So you've got the whole world as one region. Within the whole world region, you've got the Americas, and then you've got the EMEA region, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and then you've got Asia and Oceania. Those are the top level regions. But inside the Americas region, you've got North America and South America. Inside EMEA, you've got Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Okay. So now when you look at the profits or sales by region, you can look at the profits of North America, you can look at the profits of South America. But if you want the whole profits of Americas, you add up these two sales and you get the profit for Americas. If you want the sales for EMEA, you add up the sales for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And if you want the sales for the world, you add up the sales of America, EMEA, Asia, and Oceania. Okay, so that's another example of how you might, uh, example of a situation where a unary relationship might occur. So you've got this entity type called region, and some regions are contained in other regions. Okay, so you've got region, and one region might be the parent of zero or many regions, right? Because the regions at the very bottom, like for example, Oceania, Asia, Africa, Middle East, etc., those at the bottom of the tree are not parents of anything. And one region might also be part of many regions, a part of one region. One region can only be a part of one other region. And of course, again, you've got a region which is the world region which is not a part of any other region, right? It's exactly like the, uh, the organization chart example that we had looked at earlier. So once again, you can use the uh, unary relationship example here. Let's take, so that completes our discussion of unary relationships. Here we will take a look at another example. A supplier supplies certain quantities of various parts to many projects. Okay, so what, what are we talking about here? A supplier looks like an entity type to me. Supplies certain quantities, quantity looks like an attribute of some entity, of various parts, looks to me like an entity type, to many projects, another entity type. Okay, so we are really seeing three different entity types supplier, part, project. And this sentence says once a supplier supplies certain quantities of various parts to many projects. Okay. So notice that this particular sentence, in the same breath, the relationship connects three entity types. Okay, it's very different from saying supplier supplies many parts. Okay, that's, that is not the same thing as supplier supplies parts to projects. So when you say supplier supplies many parts, then you can ask a question, to which project? So if you take a particular shipment, it's not enough to say, Supplier A is supplying part B. Well, to which project? They may be supplying part B to project 1 or project 2. Those are completely two different shipments. Okay. So in order to get the full picture, you need to have the values of all the three entity types. Okay. So this, uh, in, the very, in, in a sentence, when you're talking about an instance of this relationship, for example, supplier A supplied part X to project 1, and supply 300 units. Okay, so in that sentence, you need to mention all the three entity types in order to, uh, all the three instances in order to complete the picture. If you leave out any one instance, the picture is incomplete. Okay, so there you see that the event that occurred connected all three entity types. And such a relationship is called as a ternary relationship. And of course, by now you can figure out that you could have relationships of higher orders or higher degrees as well, right? You might have a relationship that connects four entity types, five entity types, ten entity types. And in fact, in real life ER diagrams, real life database models, you do actually see that kind of a situation arising. Okay, now how do you show an, a ternary relationship? Okay, unlike a unary relationship, which we can actually show on the diagram, a ternary relationship cannot directly be showed on an ER diagram. So the way we represent a ternary relationship is actually 
to create directly an associative entity okay so in this case we can look at this sentence and say well this sentence is really talking about a shipment and therefore that shipment will be our associative entity and we connect supplier part and project to the shipment okay so whenever you have a relationship of degree 3 or more then you cannot there is no representation for that on the ER diagram you have to directly break it up into several binary relationships in this case we took the ternary relationship and broke it up into three binary relationships supplier to shipment part to shipment and uh, project to shipment but shipment notice again the associative entity notation shipment has a key migration from all of these different things and therefore if you consider a particular shipment you know that it's got to talk about supplier part and project every shipment must be by a supplier of a part to a project or for a project okay so that's the idea of a ternary relationship now notice that uh, of course the same supplier may supply the same part to the same project many times they're not going to supply it just once so the combination of supplier number part number and project number doesn't make up the primary key for shipment right because that can be duplicated the same supplier can supply the same part to the same project many times you know today they supply 100 units of the part to a particular project one week later they supply 200 units of the same part to the same project right so now you've got two occurrences where the supplier number part number project number are all the same and therefore that cannot be the primary key so therefore I also added the shipment date as part of the primary key okay so that even if they do multiple shipments so long as they are on different dates it's all right of course this arrangement would not allow us to have two shipments by the same supplier of the same part to the same project if you want that then you would not have said shipment date instead you would have said shipment date and time okay you would have specified the exact hour minute second microsecond when the shipment occurred so that th there would never be a duplicate of those four combined but an important part is whenever you've got ternary or higher degree relationships higher order relationships then what happens is that the primary key becomes very big so in this case the primary key is supplier number part number project number shipment date four different fields make up the primary key okay which is fine there's nothing conceptually wrong with it but it just becomes unwieldy and it's common practice to uh, to try to avoid that so this example this scenario shows us a ternary relationship with the key migration approach just like we did with associative entities for binary many to many relationships but a more common practice would be to give shipment its own separate key rather than make up its key through key migration so the diagram would then look like this okay so now you've got shipment shipment has got its own ID which will be a unique ID every time you create a new shipment you will give a new separate new number to it okay so shipment has a unique ID a separate ID of its own okay and therefore it doesn't require any key migration so notice that I've taken off the key migration notations here okay in fact you could do this for binary many to many relationships as well but it's not really essential there here it starts becoming necessary because otherwise it gets very unwieldy so since shipment has its own key a shipment ID which by definition is unique okay we don't need any key migration nevertheless because every shipment must have a supplier part and project those foreign key attributes will be required attributes in shipment okay they will all be required attributes and not just uh, optional attributes because all these three lines are solid so those three foreign key attributes are very much there it's just that they're not part of the primary key that's all okay so here we have an example of a ternary relationship in which we make up the key without using key migration